Meanwhile, Labour MPs say more can be done to give workers better wages and protect those holding jobs in vulnerable segments. Deputy Labour Chief Kopo Kuhn proposed expanding the progressive wage model of PWM to more sectors such as solar tech industry. He said plans will roll out over the next two to three years. The model is now mandatory in three sectors, such as cleaning and security. It calls for more training to give lower-wage workers better pay. Our sisters and brothers working as in-house cleaners and security officers are not included in the PWMs. I propose that they should be included in the mandatory PWMs so that those doing the same jobs should enjoy the same protection, progression and wages. This should be implemented as soon as possible because the framework and the mechanisms are already there. Still, Dr. Koh noted that businesses may not be able to bear the costs of salaries increasing more quickly under the PWM. For that, he suggested the wage credit scheme be used to help firms transition better by co-funding wage increases for local workers. And since consumers will be paying more, he is calling for a committee to be set up to make sure companies don't profit from the PWM. Fellow Labour MPs also welcome the move to expand the model to those managing estates in the strata management sector, as well as the pest management sector. This could benefit a total of 8,000 more workers. The introduction of PWN can uplift these sectors and their workers with a clear career progression pathway, coupled with the relevant skills, improved productivity and commensurate wages. Attention was also given to those in the growing gig economy. One MP proposed encouraging training for these workers and laws to protect them. I believe that more can be done to level the playing field between workers and platform companies to ensure that the parties are treated fairly. I suggest that we can consider either allowing the union to represent these workers collectively or to provide these workers with some level of statutory protection under this Employment Act. Mr. Patrick Tay also talked about discrimination against older local professionals, a group especially hard hit by the downturn. He says laws will send a strong signal to end workplace discrimination. Perhaps it is time for us to seriously deep dive and consider beyond mere tripartite advisories, guidelines and standards to promulgate anti-discrimination legislation to give a stronger set of teeth to existing institutions 